اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما اغلق خاتمي لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي الى صراطك المستقيم وعلى اله حق قدره ومقدار العظيم peace be upon you all what's up yeah. so my name is Mona Haydar um, Mona Haydar if you're not anglifying my name colonizing it. Um, I grew up in Flint, Michigan. I was born in Saudi Arabia. I'm Syrian-American. Uh, I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I've lived in the Redwood Forest, off the grid. I've lived at the Lama Foundation, for those of you who know what that is. Um, I have lived in Saudi Arabia and Syria and Morocco, and now I'm here with you all, and I don't know why that, any of that matters, but for some reason, place really matters. And we're here in this place right now together, and that matters. Our hearts are here together, and that matters. Um, and we're all here for a reason. Um, we're all here to come together for some greater good, some greater creation of love and light in the world, and I, and I believe that from the depths of my heart. And um, first of all, <clears throat> I wanted to um, chant with you guys. You guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So um, in Arabic, the word for human, person, being, is uh, insan. And the root word of that is nesayan, is to forget. Um, the human forgets. What do they forget? Their original nature. Their, what they come into the world with a download. Um, and we spend our lives acquiring more knowledge. But in that process of acquiring information, um, we sometimes forget that primordial and um, that, that part of us that is always there. But sometimes it just, it gets forgotten, it gets covered up, it gets hidden. And um, we have these heartbeats. We have these hearts in our chest that they have a rhythm, they have a vibration. And they, um, we're constantly chanting, whether we know it or not, through our breath, through our heartbeat, through our blood pulsing through our bodies. And um, the way that I was taught is that that rhythm is Allah. Allah, Allah. And when you hear Allah, Allah, maybe you, you hear, um, you know, the socio-political implications of that. But what I hear is breath, is life. Allah, Allah, Allah. Right? That animating spirit inside of all of us, that breath that enters our lungs when we're born into the world and that leaves our lungs when we leave the world. So Allah, 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 right? It's, it's always there, whether we remember it or forget it, it's always there. And so the chant is Allah, 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 Allah. Allah, 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 a question. What do you feel? This gentleman is doing this. I like that. What else do you feel? Say again. Vibration. Vibration. Yeah, definitely. A resonance. 
Some people feel it really in their crown chakras. Some people feel it in their solar plexus. Depends on what's going on for you. I think it's like a catch-all medicine, an opening, a closing, a healing, a salve. What else do you feel? Oneness. Expansion and oneness. Did anybody feel afraid? <laughs> right, this word <clears throat> has been weaponized. Where you hear Allahu Akbar and it means something that it doesn't actually mean. It's been weaponized. Um, and for me, that's a great tragedy, and it's a great, um, it's a great uh, introduction to the power of words and language, right? The power of um, good and bad, the power of right and wrong, <laughs> these oppositional energies that are created in the universe. And for, in my tradition, we don't have um, a problem with theodicy. Um, this is a very educated room. We, we don't have a problem of the, the problem of evil because God in God's wisdom, the divine in the divine's wisdom, created good in the same way they created bad. Good and evil exist just as we exist with all the beauty and good and potential that we can do and all the, the harm and, and sorrow we can create. That all of it exists inside of us. You know, people ask me all the time, Mona, how are you, um, how do you have a master's in Christian ethics and are a Muslim and a rapper and a mom? <laughs> like, can, like, just what? Like, explain that. And for me, it's, it's really, it's challenging. Um, <laughs> Because I feel like it's, you know, like I have, I have a cat. I have two cats, Mishmash and Amar, and I have two children. I should have mentioned them first, I guess. <laughs> um, I have two sons and two daughters. The cats are the daughters. And it's like asking one of my cats if it is white with brown patches and black stripes or if it's, you know, brown with white patches and, and, and like, it's like asking them to choose, you know, or a tiger to choose. Is it black stripes and orange stripes, or is it orange stripes and black? Like, you don't have to choose one or the other. I don't exist in this world to make choices about my identity. My identity is just the collections of things I found beautiful and liked and admired and wanted them deliciously for myself, right? That, to me, is my identity. And sometimes it's the things that I hated and that I wanted to uh, examine more in the self because inside of this, this microcosm that is a perfect, um, a perfect model for the macrocosm, I get to really look at that ugly thing and decide if it really is ugly or not. And we have this mechanism in my tradition in our hearts that allows us to see uh, beauty and allows us to see ugliness and to recognize that the divine in the wisdom of the divine created both. That they both come from the divine. That I don't have to judge one. That's not my work in this world. It's not my work to call this one ugly and this one beautiful, this one good, this one bad. It's my job. In my tradition, we call ourselves heart carriers. And the one job we have, the one job we have is to return this heart in a good, beautiful, pure state. That's the one job of a heart carrier, earth walker. That's the one job. We have these, these feet that are planted firmly inside of the earth, right? We're like trees. We have these roots that grow, grow deep into the earth. And then we have these, these, these heads that are like way up in the sky. And somehow we manage to like not float up and not completely sink down. Right? We're these earth walkers, heart carriers. And, and for me, it was always so interesting as a child that, you know, that my mouth is here be between my heart and my eyes. And I thought of, and my mind. And I thought about that all the time. That why, why, why is this here? And I, I always come back to the idea of balance. Balance and beauty, balance and beauty, balance and beauty. Right? And there's this story that I want to share with you all. 
about balance and beauty. Um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was sitting with his companions. And this is a desert in Medina where probably there were only a thousand people in their community at the time. And um, they're sitting in, in the, the gathering space, the, the masjid, the temple. And it's, a, it's an earthen floor. Um, to get to and from Medina, you have to travel long distances. And a man shows up, and um, he's dressed in, in pristine white, kind of like what I'm wearing right now under this jacket, and pristine white, no signs of travel on him. And he rolls up into the Prophet's mosque, and he's like, hey, what's up? Um, nobody knows who he is. And he sits knee to knee with the Prophet Muhammad, knee to knee. You know, in, in the Eastern model, a teacher would sit like that with their student. You sit on your legs, on your knees. And um, it was such an intimate position to be in for a person who was a stranger to the community. And he moved past that level of intimacy and he placed his two hands on the thighs of the Prophet Muhammad. And the companions of the Prophet Muhammad are sitting around him in this temple. And they're witnessing this happen. And they're like, like this is weird. We don't know this guy. And he's like, has his hands on the Prophet's thighs. Um, do with that what you will. And um, this man asked the Prophet Muhammad, Mal Islam, what is Islam? What is it to submit? The word in, in Arabic for Islam, the tradition I follow as a Muslim, is um, to submit. One who submits is a Muslim. And he says, what is Islam? And he says, Islam is that you... Um, do the actions, it's the form, right? You bear witness, you pray, you fast, you do these things, you give alms, you do the things, right? You do the things. And he said, very good. The stranger said this to the prophet. He said, you've spoken truth. Now the companions are wild and out. They're like, I don't know what the, who this guy thinks he is. And they're, they're shook, right? And, and then he says, what is Iman? He says, what is beauty? And he says to him, the prophet says, Iman, faith, is to believe in that which you cannot see. Believe in that which you cannot see. That you're, you enter into a state that is beyond the physicality, the form, right? That you believe in the angels and the divine and you believe in the last day and judgment. And you believe in good and bad. That they both come from the creator. And then he said, you have spoken truth. What is ihsan? Now, ihsan is a very interesting word. It is um, in Arabic. Um, it's sort of hard to, to translate. I'm sure any of you who speak another language, sometimes you just have to use the other word, uh, the word in the language that, you know, is indigenous to you or your mother tongue because it, doesn't just, it just doesn't quite capture it, right? So ihsan is to make beautiful is to make excellent, right? It's, it's the transitive form of the intransitive verb. If any of you know what that means. You're scientists, right? So you probably get that. Um, and so ihsan is to make beauty, to create beautiful, to create excellence. And, and he says to him, what is ihsan? And he says, الإحسان أنك تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فهو يراك. That you worship God, you worship the divine as if you see the divine. And if you do not see the divine, you know that the divine sees you. And Arabic is a funny language. It has like little riddles and secrets and mysteries hidden in, inside of it. And if you pause at a certain place in that statement, it changes it completely. And it annihilates the entire, entire translation I just said to you. It says that you worship God not as if you see God, but you worship God until you cease to exist inside of yourself. And then you will see God. You worship God when you, in your individuality, cease to exist, you will see God. Right? And he said, Ahsant. Yes. Sadaqs. You have spoken the truth, that is what it is. And then he spoke about the fourth dimension of Islam, which is time. 
He asked him, when is the hour? When is the hour? And the prophet said to this man, you know more of it than, than the one you are asking. The asker knows more of it than the one you are asking. And then he said, then what are the signs of the hour? And he went on to describe it. And, and in some interpretations of this story, there's a fifth dimension, which is space. And they come to talk about those signs of the hour. Right? So you have form, physicality. You have that which you cannot see. Right? Faith, the invisible. And then you have the, the, the combination of the two. Right? When you, in your beauty and excellence, become harmonious, right? That you enter into a state of excellence. So you, you, everything you do becomes beauty making in the world. You become a beauty maker when your form matches up with your faith, right? And you don't have to do anything, right? You're no longer doing because everything you do becomes worship. In our tradition, everything, everything you say becomes excellence and beauty creating in the world. Everything your hand touches. And literally, this hadith goes on to say that the hand by which you do becomes God. And the eyes by which you see become God. You see through the eyes of God. You, you work through the, the hands of God. And what does that mean? It is to become a fully embodied and spiritualized being. And how do you do that? You do that by stopping trying. I had a, I had a, a teacher once say to me, um, Mona, if you would just, number one, stop trying so hard, and number two, try a little bit harder. <laughs> he said, you could be a saint. Stop trying so hard and just try a little harder with everything. And so this question is always on my heart and in my mind. Um, did, I, did I do this thing excellently? Did I give it my heart? Did I let, allow my heart to unfold for this thing, for this person, for this conversation? Do I allow myself to be a muhsina, an excellence and beauty creator in the world? And how do I do that? By remembering. Duh, dummy, like remember. You don't have to do anything but be your most beautiful and pure and primal self. And that doesn't mean reverting to like babyhood and weird fetishes. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, like really sitting in the essence of that which is beyond identity and that which takes in all of the identity and embraces it lovingly. And says that I love you and I see you and I honor you and I am so much more. And also I'm nothing, right? And also I, I exist in this liminal space, but I feel that I am so much more, that I'm eternal, that I'm infinite. How, how do I have a birth and a death experience, but I have this feeling that I'm going to live forever? Don't we all feel like... Maybe we might live forever, like we might be the ones. <laughs> like maybe if we try, stop trying so hard and try a little harder, we could be the ones to live forever. And I'll tell you a secret, it's because we are going to live forever. Just not in this experience that we're sharing at this moment. And in this experience that we're sharing at this moment. And so in Islam, we don't have a problem of duality. We don't have a... a we don't have this understanding of the world. Good and bad, right and wrong, it's all gravy, baby. It's all gravy. And, and it's all delicious. When your perspective shifts, when you attune your heart to deliciousness in the good, in the bad, in the ugly, you come to understand that it's all gravy. Unless you're gluten-free, then you need <laughs> Like gluten-free gravy or vegan gravy or whatever it is. I'm now not eating any of the things, so I'm like, breakfast, come on, what was that? Like, I got hash browns, so like, I don't know about y'all. Y'all probably eat all the things, never mind. But I wanted to leave you with one last thought, and that is, we are here. We are here, and we might 
live forever. And what are you going to do with that? If you know that this heart that you carry inside of your chest, this body, this spirit, is forever, how are you going to treat it? How are you going to be with it in this world? If it's forever, it's yours forever. Thank you. Thank you.